Okay, guys, now before we get this thing going, uh, allow me to explain to you how this whole bowl with the pros thing works. So, first off, you pay the fee to enter, and then they, once you've done that, they assign you to a random lane, and then you are assigned a pro at random. Now, you have no power to pick the pro that you get to bowl with, uh, and that kind of sucks, but you know, whatever, what can you do? Also, you don't get to bowl with the pro by yourself. No, it's actually, it's you and two other people and the pro. So it's a total of, like, including yourself, it's a total of four people to each pair of lanes. Now, there's good news and bad news. The good news is that uh, I got to bowl with five different pros, and the bad news is that you only get to bowl five frames with them, and then they move on to the next pair of lanes. Even more bad news, we played nine pin no tap instead of the usual 10 pin bowling. And for those of you who don't know what 9-pin no-tap is, well, uh, it's basically if you knock down 9 pins, then that counts as a strike. And then everything else, is uh, it remains the same, you know. Uh, you knock down 10, you get a, an actual strike, and then, of course, the whole thing with the spares, you know how that works. So, yeah, that's pretty much what that is. Now, to begin, they start you off with about 10 minutes of practice, and then the real game begins. So I'm going to go ahead and put up the scoreboard for you guys with only five frames so you guys can see exactly how I played against the pros. And to avoid any kind of confusion, I'm going to put the nine pin strikes. Um, I'm going to put them up as uh, colored purple so you guys know which ones are the real strikes and which ones are the nine pin strikes. So uh, as you can clearly see here, they started us off with uh, Jen Higgins. And if you don't know who she is... She, she had back-to-back -back fourth place finishes at the USBC Queens in 2013 and 2014. And she's also the first woman to roll a perfect game in the PBA Tour event way back in 2006. So, uh, yeah, that's really all there is to say. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to get this thing started for you guys. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who, uh, who else I got to bowl with. I'm going to let you guys watch to, and find that out. I mean, why spoil it, right? So, yeah, let's do this. On with the show. Okay, everybody, due to a large amount of disturbances, I guess we could call them, because people just wouldn't shut up uh, behind the camera, and, like, we couldn't bowl in peace, I guess you could say, and also, obviously, there's, like, a ton of other people on other lanes around us, um, I decided that I'm gonna, like, you know, uh, do some commentating while this is happening, and also, there were a bunch of questions that I did ask these pros, uh, that I thought maybe you guys might want to know about that you probably didn't know, so... Unfortunately, I couldn't get very many questions in there because, like I said, they only bowl five frames with us. But anyway, getting on with it. Uh, Jen Higgins, of course, as you can see, started off pretty strong. I started off somewhat okay. Um, but as you can imagine, I'm, I, I get my butt kicked because I'm not as great compared to them. But uh, one question that I did manage to get in there to ask Jen Higgins was how many perfect games she did have to her name because not sure if you heard but she did get uh the first ever perfect game in a pba tour in 2006 so i asked her how many perfect games she had to her name and she said she had about 25 and the funny thing was is that um she said like she said it like it was nothing she, she was like oh i've got 25 so that goes to show you how good uh jen higgins and many of these pros are that like perfect games are nothing and meanwhile here i am trying to chase a 300 game Still on my bucket list. Uh, my highest game right now is at a 267. She did end up like uh, putting that, uh, pointing that question back towards me, like, "What's my highest game, or do I have any perfect games?" And unfortunately, I didn't. So yeah, I told her 267, and she told me that I will get there. I hope I do. But yeah, in of itself, as you can see here, I'm getting my ass kicked with two open frames in the third and fourth, and then her going on strong already. Would she have been able to get another perfect game? I do not know. But anyway. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I was able to ask Jen Higgins. If there was any other questions that unfortunately I do not know what they were, but you know, <laughs> uh, there's only so much you could think of and so much you can ask when you've only got five frames to bowl with them. But anyway, going on here, game number two. Yes, we ended up getting Deandra as Beatty, uh, one of uh, Belmo, I, I guess we could say one of Belmo's very good friends. Uh, one of the, uh, she was, uh, she did a very good series that, I, in my opinion, was very well known, where it was called JVD, Jason vs. Deandra. Um, I did ask her that question, like, what happened to that? And, and she responded by saying, well, you know, uh, the adult life took over, and which makes a lot of sense. I mean, Deandra, as of now, has two kids. One is nine years old, one is five years old. And, uh, of course, uh, Jason having three kids, for, uh, three kids himself, sorry. Um, yeah, and then also he's busy, you know, 
being the best in the world. And when you're the best in the world at some, obviously you're gonna be needed in a lot of places. Uh, so you pack on a very heavy schedule. So that, you know, that, that kind of sucks because that's a series that I actually really want to see come back because that was something that I watched a whole lot on YouTube. I thought it was hilarious. And um, she actually told me that she took great pleasure in making Jason jump in the lake. If uh, any of you know what I'm talking about, there was a challenge. It was called carpet bowling. They were outdoors and it was just like a carpet in the shape of a lane. And they were they were just like bowling outdoors on onto this on this weird carpet type of thing. And the loser had to jump in in a lake or something like that in some body of water with their clothes on. And Deandra told me she was determined to win that, which she did end up winning it. And uh, yeah, Jason ended up jumping in the lake and she, she said that she ended up taking great pleasure in that. But as you can see here, it looks like I had a pretty good game, but uh, uh, that, uh, let's see, I think she's on a three, yeah, a three bagger here. Um, let's see, what else does she end up packing here? And yeah, of course, as you can see there, I end up uh, using the crux to end it and bam, right there, nice. Um, and let's see, what does she end up packing here? Let's have a look. She ends up picking up a nine pin strike and yeah see that it was already over for me she already packed up a four bagger there and then i think that was a ended up turning into a five bagger how nice so yeah when i thought i had won i ended up i looked back at this and ended up doing the scores and found that i had lost so that yeah look at that total 108 to 125 but hey i gave it my best shot remember these are pros and to be totally fair i haven't been bowling for quite a long time and then as you can see here julia bond uh, a newcomer to the PWBA uh, she's I think if I had to I think she just started like at the time that you guys see this it's been about a month now since she's been on tour and already she has one regional title to her name um, and yeah I mean she's she's definitely one to uh, one to watch one to definitely uh, look out for on the lane she's got the skills and uh, yeah, she's, uh, she attended the University of Nebraska or something like that, and she was teammates with Jasmine Mason, who's also a newcomer on the tour as well. Um, I don't know if there was any questions that I did ask her. I think that was that was the question that I ended up asking her, and as you can see there, she picked up a 710. Um, and yeah, uh, she she I asked her, like, you what university did you attend? And she told me University of Nebraska. And at the time she entered as a freshman, Liz Culkin, um, already a well-known member on the PWBA tour US opens a US women's open winner um, she was a senior so while and look at that yes back to back 710 and I'm like what what was that and uh, yeah, she had no answer for me whatsoever and yeah I ended up taking my shot right here and I, I just couldn't believe that back to back 710s so how you don't see that too often and yeah this ended up happening I'm gonna help her make it Really? Okay. You gotta pick which one you want. Okay. I got a video tape that. I'm gonna move out of the way. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, um, I, I thought that, that Julia ended up missing, but no, Deandra was the one that missed. But yeah, that, that would have been pretty cool had they gotten it, but they didn't. But you know, <laughs> it, it was pretty funny that they actually ended up doing that. And if you end up doing bowl with the pros and something like, expect for something like this to happen, because that, that they do that a lot. Like they try to do like trick shots, I guess we can call them. It's pretty hilarious. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I think I ended up winning this one, but that's only because of the back-to-back -back 710s that Julia ended up getting in the second and third. But it was overall, it was pretty cool to bowl with her. And uh, yeah, game number four, somebody I did not expect to uh, bowl with. Uh, and yeah, she, you can see right there. Um, yeah, Danielle McEwen. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to get in five frames with her. 
uh, yeah, so some questions that I did ask her was um, how, how many bowling balls does she usually take with her on tour? And she told me usually between like 12 and 14, but for this particular tournament, she took a whopping 16 bowling balls with her. Uh, it, that was insane and uh, like I w there's me thinking I was cool walking in with like four and yo no like this is a, like a very normal thing for a professional bowlers to take like 12 13 14 15 and even 16 bowling balls with them uh, because you know you gotta I guess you gotta be really 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 prepared for anything when you're out there bowling professionally so um, another question I didn't ask this one but somebody actually had the guts to ask it because this is one of those things where it's not really our business, but somebody asked, uh, where's Marshall Kent bowling at? Because for those of you who don't know, Marshall Kent and uh, Danielle McEwen are a couple, or at least I think they are. I'm not sure if they still are or not, but it, like I said, it's not my business. Um, she pretty much just answered it like pretty straightforward, like I have no idea. And that's something you can expect from Danielle is she's very forthright, I guess we could say. Like she's very, you know, just straightforward, like, that, that's just an example of it. Like somebody asked that question and she just, yeah, I have no idea. So uh, yeah, another thing about her is that uh, that you can expect from her if you were to ever cross with her is uh, she's, she keeps a very positive attitude without a doubt. Like I asked her, um, what do you plan on uh, take, like what do you plan on using for this, uh, for this tournament? And she says she has no idea, but uh, she's gonna keep an open mind about it and whatever she uses, she's gonna just, try to um, work with that and do the best that she possibly can. That's what she told me. Um, and yeah, that's uh, Danielle McEwen for you. And of course I get my ass handed to me by her. I mean, she's easily like top 10, like in the PWBA without a doubt. I mean, there, there's just no doubt about it. Uh, as you can see here, she ends up, I think finishing it off with the, and uh, yeah, I think she just finishes it off with three strikes and What's impressive to me is that she didn't even have her spare ball with her when she picked up that seven spare in the night. She was just like, ah, I'll just use my strike ball. And she went for it like it was nothing. So yeah, there we go. And then game five of five, the very last one, we ended up uh, bowling with Jasmine Mason. Uh, like I said, uh, a little bit uh, before, uh, she was also a newcomer along with Julia Bond as they are teammates from the U University of Nebraska. She is what, um, she's got that very happy, bright, positive attitude about her uh, which is uh, obviously not a bad thing and uh, if any of you remember this girl like if you did see the uh, CP3 Invitational this year that's uh, that was her she was on it uh, she, she was she participated in the uh, celebrity pro bowl off kind of thingy and she got runner-up I can't remember she lost to that one dude from that one TV show I, I can't remember what it's called but yeah um, that, I thought that was pretty cool that we got to uh, bowl with her too. Uh, one question that I did ask her, probably kind of a dumb one, but I, I just wanted to know anyway, uh, what weight for bowling ball she used. And she told me that she does use 15, just like 90% of the pros do. And uh, she did tell me that uh, way before, like uh, when she first started uh, bowling in the, like, the university, um, she, she was using 14 pounds and her coach convinced her to move up to 15. and. The struggle was real for her, but you know, she got the hang of it. And as you could clearly see here, bam, does it like it's nothing. So yeah, she's, uh, she's definitely got a bright future ahead of her. If this is what she plans on doing uh, full time, I'm not sure, I didn't ask her that. But yeah, I think that was the only question that I managed to get from her because you know, I don't really know her all that well. And yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really know what to ask. So that was really the only thing that I did end up asking her, but yeah, fantastic player, picks up a perfect game with two nine pin uh, no tap strikes. And uh, now here's the thing. We were supposed to only get five pros, okay? Uh, but because uh, I, don't, I don't know how it works in any other events, but uh, for, like as far as I know, we're only supposed to get a maximum of five pros to bowl with. But for this one, because there wasn't very many people who participated in this first pro-am, um, we ended up getting a, a, a sixth, which was really lucky for us. Now, who was that sixth and final person? Well, see for yourself.
That's right. It's it ended up being none other than Missy Parkin. Uh, I I couldn't believe it in a way. I feel like I consider myself lucky. I mean, look at this. Just look at it. That approach and that release is everything, man. I it I've seen it like I I have seen it on TV, but to see it like 10 feet in front of me is just insane it's something else but yeah i mean i put up the fight against her you'll you guys will see what the results are here i can't remember what they are so just look back at them here but just look at that that's amazing so anyway i did uh manage to get a question in there to ask her and that was what happened to that fire that she once had because before the tour was brought back in 2015 she she used to be on fire making tv shows left and right and then when the tour was brought back you know she hasn't been seen a whole lot you know she barely makes any she has not made a tv show she has not had a title one she has made a few step ladders here and there but i i asked her that and she said personal issues took over you know they, they really took a toll on her whatever they were i didn't ask what those personal issues were but yeah um th that's what happened and i asked her what her chances were for this one and she said well it's a new year uh she uh, uh she was feeling pretty confident uh as clearly as you could see uh her ball reaction was pretty good her um approach her release was pretty good on point so she said that she was feeling pretty good that she could get pretty far she didn't know how far but she was feeling pretty confident in herself which is good and uh yeah someone else actually ended up asking where's scott norton and for those of you who don't know scott norton is a very good friend of missy park and also a pro bowler himself and she told me that he just quit you know i i don't know what he is now uh, i i don't know if he's like a lawyer or an attorney but he's somewhere along those lines but yeah for those of you who ever wonder what happened to scott norton now you know she just told us yep he quit he hung it up he hung up the bowling shoes and he shelved the bowling ball for good uh will he ever come back i don't know i didn't ask her that but yeah oh well it is what it is and as you can see there yeah she blew the chance to get a perfect game there <laughs> that's why she put her face to the camera like oh, i'm sorry but yeah look at that with ease took her, took that black widow pink and just picked up the spare so there you guys go all has been finished bowl with the pros uh honestly i can say that was totally worth it uh if you guys ever uh, have like a pwba event or a pba event in uh you're like close to you you should definitely go it's totally fun even if like it's um you know a nine pin no tap which is what we were doing so basically like if you get nine pins that's considered a strike it, but you know it, it sucks that you can't really play it like the normal way but you know the fact that um <clears throat> excuse me the fact that you get to uh you know a bowl like get this close to these pros is actually really awesome so yeah i was able to get this pin and then i was able to get uh deandre asbady's signature there on the top and then of course jasmine mason there and uh shannon o'keefe i was fortunate enough to get her signature she wasn't bowling on uh like she wasn't doing this event but uh yeah and she didn't even uh, show up for the practice either i'm not sure what she was there for but she was like uh, there like passing out like these programs and stuff and I managed to get her to sign this so yay and then uh, Julia Bond as well the great Missy Parkin she was really nice and uh, let's see where's the other one oh of course who could forget Danielle McEwen so yeah um, uh, yeah this badass pin double decker lane so that's a nice little souvenir and then I'm gonna be going to the other bowl with the pros which is gonna be on uh, Saturday night like after uh, the whole stepladder finals is over so uh, I'll get the chance to bowl with some other different pros so yeah uh, it was cool though because uh, uh, Liz Johnson was there Kelly Kulik was there unfortunately I didn't get to bowl with them but you know we can't have it all now can we that, but this is still a pretty uh, like pretty badass to me and it was really fun it was totally worth it and I'm glad I was able to do it so yeah you guys ever have one of these events in your area go because it is fun it is worth it even if it's nine pin no tap and you know it's you only get to bowl with about four or five pros luckily we got the uh privilege to bowl with six so yeah uh that's really all there is to say for uh day one of this that is now over tomorrow is gonna be qualifying round one and two which i will definitely be there to film that so yeah uh, now I must uh, chill out and wait for tomorrow. So peace guys